Thank you. Thank you uh, so much for the performance, uh, Ola. And um, uh, it's nice to see uh, all of you here. And um, we're going to start the this day uh, with a discussion uh, about the future, uh, where every discussion ought to be be started uh, among those who uh, will live with the burden of the decisions made today, or the benefits of the decisions made today, uh, and among those who will uh, push the boundaries further than uh, any of us uh, sitting here today. Uh, I will, uh, <laughs> I will, I want to uh, present the panel uh, that is going to uh, discuss these uh, issues with me today. Uh, welcome up. Uh, yes, um, I'll give you a, a microphone here. Uh, in this panel here today, we have uh, Sara Hermansson, Nila Omma, Johan Nila Stolka, Isabel Thomasen, and uh, Alva Asprot. Um, and uh, I think uh, we'll uh, just jump right into it. Uh, Sara, you... Um, told us yesterday at the dinner about how you have uh, taken your culture back um, uh, from from uh, a quite uh, harsh state where where um, you have you didn't you uh, didn't have the language you you um, had uh, past generations uh, losing their their culture uh, why was that important to you um it was um I have always known that I was Sami. Always. There were small fragments of the culture in my home where I grew up, like um a few words and I heard the joik in my home, but that was that. Um I learned South Sami when I was uh, young in in the school. But then I didn't have um, a network, um, so I stopped and I learned Spanish instead, uh, which I regret now. Um, but then when I moved here to Umeå, I started to get um, all these questions in my head and thoughts. Um, why I don't know my own history and why I don't have my own culture, because that should be... Um, um obvious yeah that should be obvious that as an indigenous people and a uh, sami people or wherever you're from that you should feel that you own your own culture but i didn't feel like that it felt like it had been stolen from me and that was the motivation for me to get it back so i started to working with that um Nila, um, you're a doyar, uh, a craftsman. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you do you think that that um, um, this generation and future generations have have something to? Uh, are we are we um, uh, able to push the boundaries further uh, and and take back more than than we have lost? Of course we are. Um, as long as we are willing and as long as we're still connecting, talking about it, showing, um, yeah, just uh, upholding our culture, then we have a great chance. I think uh, the culture, especially among young people, at least when I compare it to what I've heard, uh, my parents and grandparents told me that today is it's very living and it's uh, a lot of young people who are really taking the culture and upholding it uh, a lot and with with a lot of pride these days and uh, I think we're um, I think we're just moving to a better place every day at least in my opinion uh, Ioannila, um, uh, do you think that 
the future generations have a bright future? Well, of course. I mean, uh, with this beautiful panel of people <laughs> pushing these boundaries, uh, I believe that we're going to have a great future. Um, looking at some society, I believe that great things are happening. Uh, looking at like music for the last 20 years, getting into new genres, making new artists, and, uh, and also pushing through in the mainstream music. Um, I believe we have a great will to survive, and they can't break our spirits. Uh, we won't let them. <laughs> uh, Alva, um, do you do you think that it's important that the Sami culture is visible in the majority society? Yes, of course. I think it's very important, not just because people obviously need to learn more about the Sami culture and Sami people and the struggle that we've been through and still are struggling with, but also because we need representation. I mean, when you grow up, you need people to look up to, you need people that you can ent identify with. And I think it's very important just because, because of that. Uh, just to, to uh, nuance it, uh, is there any risks uh, of, uh, of uh, showing the, the, the culture in, in the majority society and, and uh, are we? Uh, are there any risks that we uh, adapt too much to the uh, to the view of of the Sami culture? Yeah, I think that's a risk. I mean, uh, there's also always a risk that we uh, maybe just only show a part of the culture. I mean, we're multifaceted. We do a lot of stuff. All Sami people are different. We live in cities. We live in villages. We live in uh, alone in um, on the mountains, we live everywhere, uh, and we do a lot of stuff. So I mean, it's always uh, a risk that we don't represent the whole people. And I mean, it's hard to do that because we're we're so different. Like, yeah, I think in the end we can only really represent ourselves. We can't stand up as an individual and represent the whole people, but we can represent the part that we're from or the family or the area or, or but we can't whatever piece you show in media or whatever is just a little piece and I think um, if you only portray one or two sides that's what people will think about us and not know everything so we need to be careful in, in being clear in that we're like I'm only representing what I do, I'm not representing everyone. Sara. Yeah, and I also um, I agree with you, and I also think that with this uh, sort of gatherings with different people talking uh, from different cultures and different parts of Sapmi, um, we also we represent ourselves, but we show this diversity that we have in Sapmi, and I also think that it, that's very important. <coughs> to me, it isn't a part of representation or not. It's part of just existing. And I think that's what we're seeing in the Sami society. We're, we're trying to exist. Uh, we're trying to get our rights. We're trying to just make sure to live our lives, uh, just as we've always had. And uh, <coughs> I mean, we can argue and we could <laughs> uh, think a lot about representation in many ways, but uh, for me it's just existing as, as I am and not be needing to, to change that for, for anyone else, I think. I, uh, Isabelle, uh, yeah, you have something to say. I think we have, uh, with being uh, a part of uh, the native people of Sweden and Norway, Finland and Russia, uh, we have this inner responsibility to represent our culture, not to represent everyone, but to represent me as an individual of this culture. And that's why I think we all have this will to push the border forward. Yeah. Uh, you worked uh, a lot with uh, the Sami language, and you work here in Umeå uh, as a language supporter. Uh, what what um, importance does the language have uh, in uh, the strength of the culture? It's a big part. <laughs> uh, it's a big part of uh, your identity. Um, and I see it every day uh, with my uh, students 
that they um, can feel uh, stolt. Proud. proud of just learning one or two new words every day and it gives them the strength to be proud of who they are as a native individual. And most of the kids, when we started a kindergarten here in Umeå, a Sami kindergarten, uh, most of the kids don't have the Sami language at home. Maybe their grandparents had it or their ancestors. Uh, but now, after just two years of this preschool, most of them can understand the Sami language and uh, the two years old, two year olds, olds are saying like, uh, I am both Sami and Swedish, like two years old. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, do you see a positive um, development uh, in the Sami society uh, regarding the language? Yes, I can see it from um, the, from our side all the people that, uh, that want to learn and want to teach their children, they're doing everything that they can, using all the material they can get and uh, going to courses, joining um, uh, language showers. Weekends, language weekends. Yeah, that we arrange. <laughs> uh, and doing everything that they can to really learn it and that's where I see hope. On the other side, <laughs> we need more. <laughs> we need more from the government side. We're working with everything that we have, but we need more support. What kind of support uh, do we need? Uh, is it uh, uh, funding or? Uh we need funding. Uh, we need the culture bearer. Uh, culture carriers to get the funding that they need. All of them who have the motivation to push this forward need to get this funding so that it's more available for everyone. Because now we're like, I'm sitting at home on the weekends making my own school material. There, it doesn't exist in the Lulisami language. It's like, it can't be like this. We need more. We need help. Uh, I'm grown up in Stockholm. I moved to Jokomoki just two months ago. Uh, so I've lived there for almost 20 years. And um, um, learning Sami in Stockholm, it's uh, quite hard. I got this distance courses where I would record myself and send them to, with, in an email to, to Jokomoki. And then my uh, teacher would write something, you should pronounce this differently. <laughs> and it was uh, really hard to... To, to do that when uh, I didn't have a place to sit, I didn't have any teachers to help me, I didn't, uh, I was supposed to do this all by myself at, at home uh, with no no support and um, that was really challenging of course. Um, looking in Stockholm we need to, to create spaces where Sami people can meet, uh, cultural centers where uh, working with the civil society, we could build places where young Sami people can meet uh, and uh, where we can info in spread information about Sami people, but also get these places where we can, can share our experiences with each other. Yeah. Yes, uh, I also work as a teacher and I work with um, dis distance learning. Uh, and it's very hard. I actually have... Um, two students in Stockholm, and it's very uh, heartwarming to see when such young kids are so proud and are so eager to learn their language. And it's like the first lesson I had with them, they're like, I am Sami, are you Sami too? Are we going to learn today? Oh, uh, and they are so excited. But after a while, um, because of the... Um, it's, it's hard to teach over a computer. And that's also where we need to find ways as teachers to develop material through the computer or, and in real life to um, make it easier for the kids to learn because 
um, imagine if you sit alone in a room and just a computer. You are not uh, creative. Uh, the kids want to be creative as well. And I think creativity is what um, boosts the, the learning process. So that's um, really an issue that we need to work with um, together. And as you say, uh, support the culture carriers that are um, eager to develop these materials. But of course, they need funding. So we're... Um, uh, it's the funding that, that is lacking uh, it, um, in, in like the big part. But is there anything we can do uh, inside the Sami community that, uh, that we could develop today? What do you think, Ivanila? I think the most important part is that we Sami people as a group support each other and that we thrive on each other's successes and that we try to lift each other to, to new heights. Um, and uh, if we want to make sure that we get our rights back, if we want to claim our lands, then we need to work as a group and we need to support each other. Um, in many cases, I think we agree. Uh, I think we're agreeing that there's a problem with mental health for your young Sami people. We are agreeing that the, the colonization and the exploitation of our lands need to stop. Uh, the support and funding of culture uh, in general needs to, to get bigger. Um, and uh, I mean, we're unified in that. And uh, I mean, I think we just need to uh, find ways to make sure that everyone else knows that we are unified and we are together as one. Um, you talked about rights. Uh, is it important to uh, know your rights? We, we're going to have a, a panel uh, discussing uh, uh, indigenous rights uh, soon. Uh, is, it, is it important to know your rights? It is very important. Uh, I didn't know my own rights as Sami until I was 16, 17. That's a problem. When you don't know your own rights uh, and what possibilities you have, and you don't know that they are existing, you can't, um, you can't uh, not demand, but, but um, you are living under um, pressure. <laughs> Oppression, yeah. Um, for example, I didn't know when I was at the, at the school here in Umeå, um, uh, I um, didn't know I had a right to learn Sami in the school. So I went to the principal and I told him that I wanted to uh, read Sami. And he asked me, well, do you speak Sami at home? Uh, because that is a uh, demand if you, are, uh, if you have another modern language that you want to speak and learn. And I said, no, we don't. Um, nobody knows it. <laughs> uh, and he said, well, then you can't, you, you are not uh, obligated, or you're not, you're not, you don't have the um, uh, possibility to learn it here. And I was very frustrated. And then I, um, because of the, the Sohke uh, Sami um, group <laughs> association, um, I met with them and I talked with them and I made connections and then I was told by other Samis, not by the state, not by uh, another uh, a Swede, a uh, non-Sami, but by the Sami people that you have rights and you um, have a right to learn your Sami language in school. And when I knew that and I had read on, on the Sami parliament um, website, I went back to the principal and I said, I am going to learn Sami in school. And you are going to fix it. Otherwise, I'm going to report you. <laughs> and then I got to learn. Uh, Ioannila. Well, I, I've just moved to Jokkmokk, and uh, it's the best place in the world. I really, really, really encourage everyone to go there. Um, 
But one of the things that the municipality did a couple of years ago, it's making Sami obligatory for all children in Jokomoki. And uh, I believe that these kinds of, uh, of uh, uh, these kinds of decisions are really pushing the borders on what's possible. Um, I mean, it is possible to learn Sami. You just need to, to, to pay your teachers enough. And I mean, <laughs> that isn't a problem just for, for Sami teachers. That's a pro problem for teachers in general. Um, so, I mean, I, in Yokomoki you can study Sami for 23 years from the, you're a little kid until you are 23 years old. And uh, a lot of municipalities can do a lot more uh, and learn a lot from, from places like Yokomoki to, to, to get even better. Uh, we're uh, running out of time. It's a, a quite short uh, panel discussion. Uh, but I want to uh, ask you uh, one last question. Um, in our audience here today, we have many decision makers and representatives of, of different parts of the society. Um, and uh, I want to ask you, do you have any advice that you could give them uh, that they could uh, bring back home and uh, uh, use to strengthen the, the Sami culture? Uh, Sara? Um, I just want to say teach about uh, the Sami people, learn about the Sami people and pass that knowledge on. Because um, it is very important that the Sami uh, people feel that we are we are people. Uh, we are not obligated to answer all the questions about the Sami people. And um, also for my, um, uh, in my case, that I went to the principal, I wanted to learn Sami, I was told no, but I had a right and I didn't know. That's dangerous for us. Um, and uh, yeah, just learn, learn more about, uh, about our people and pass that on. Uh, well, I would say, uh, I would say, listen to what we have to say and whatever all of us has to say, because we're we're all part of a community, but we're all from different parts, we're all from different areas, and we all have different, uh, we all have different ideas and thoughts, but just listen before you speak. Uh, or before you make decisions, because I think our words um, will have a lot more impact if people stop and listen and not just try to make decisions over our heads. First, I would like to thank the panel for being giving such great answers. Um, <coughs> I would uh, suggest everyone in here, and uh, I would suggest the colonizers to pull back and return all the occupied land to, to the rightful owners. I think that's a, a great start. Um, <coughs> and that's a kind of a general answer. So I would give one really specific as well to, to maybe the municipality of, of Umeå. And that would be to, to hire Alva, I think. <laughs> uh, she's a great young Sami leader. And uh, it, taking these persons and using them and using the youth that are already engaged to, to make sure to uh, to claim our rights and support them, uh, that would be much support. Uh, we're really thankful for that. Learning material, period. <laughs> <laughs> we need learning material, and we need it now. Our language is in a crisis, and we need to save it, so pay up. <laughs> Thank you for opening up a job in opportunity. That was nice. Uh, no, but I think uh, as uh, everyone has said, listen to us, give us funding, of course, but also know that uh, the Sami people won't stop fighting for our rights because we have always done that. And all the rights we have today uh, are because we have fought for them and we will keep on doing that. And I think uh, it's... Um, uh, it's nice to see everyone here uh, because I think that's uh, kind of a uh, uh, proof that we will that, that we're keeping keep on fighting. Uh, so if you don't give us our rights now, we're coming for you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. 
and you got yeah. Uh, is the municipality um, able to hire you? You. <laughs> Yes, I'm out of job <laughs> in two <laughs> months, so <laughs> hire me. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I want to thank uh, the panel. Uh, fantastic um, to hear your voices. And uh, I hope uh, that you all uh, listen and uh, take the advice uh, with you. Uh, thank you.